Yes, this is a drone. Yes, I am Captain Drone, but I also fly RC planes and welcome to RC Plane Week. Hey everyone, welcome to the Captain Drone YouTube channel. My name is Steve and I am a drone pilot and because I'm a drone pilot, I also fly RC planes and I have two RC jets out with me today. And these are awesome jets because they're not very expensive. They're very authentic looking and they go like stink. Now, when I fly drones, people always come up to me and say, hey, that's a cool drone, but how high does it go and how far can you fly it? That's one thing, but when I fly RC planes, nobody ever asks that. They all say, how fast can these things go? And I don't know, so that's why I'm out here today to do a speed test on both of these planes. Now, in order to do a proper speed test, you have to fly these planes level using the recommended battery, which is a 4S battery, 2200 milliamp hour LiPo battery. And by flying them level, it causes the plane not to dive or go up or anything like that because that affects the speed. So that's what I'm gonna do in this video and we'll see which one is the faster it's not really a comparison but i've flown these both before and they seem pretty fast to me but you know until i measure the speed with the gps which i'm going to do i can't tell how fast they are now here's a picture of the gps i'm going to be using and a link to that gps is below and also i am going to put a little camera on the top of these planes to get some footage because when the planes go out of sight my little GoPro on my hat won't see them, so that way I can give you some footage. And the camera I'm using is an Insta360 Go, and a link to that is below as well. So with all that said, uh, let's go fly these planes. Now let's quickly take a look at the planes I'll be flying. First, we have the F-16 Falcon 64mm EDF Jet version 2, and it is available from Motion RC. This jet is highly detailed and stunning to look at from any angle you choose. The jet does have ailerons, however those ailerons are connected to the elevator so you have an elevon situation. But you do get a functioning rudder which makes this plane a joy to fly on windy days. The only item missing from this plane would be retractable landing gear. However, if you wish you can remove the landing gear, hand launch it and belly land it. Next we have the F-22 Raptor 64mm EDF jet version 2, also available from Motion RC. This is Freewing's new high-performance model that is highly detailed. This model comes with working ailerons and working elevators, however the rudder is stationary. That just means the turning radius will be a bit wider than that of the F-16. And just like the F-16, the landing gear is non-retractable so it always stays down and once again you can remove it, hand launch it and belly land it. First plane we're going to fly is the Raptor. I have the battery in it already, I just have to connect it and I'm going to stick this GPS in the center of gravity someplace around there and I'll put this camera someplace up here. Now by placing the GPS on the center of gravity it should not affect the performance. If it does affect it in any way it's going to be so very slight. So it's double sided tape I stuck there. I I know a lot of you are cringing and you go, man, when you pull off that double-sided tape, you're pulling off all the paint. Could be true, but I have a plan. I should mention that normally I fly on the other side of this field, but there's an awful lot of people out here flying planes at the moment. And if I'm going to fly a jet and try to bring it down low to me just to get some video in my GoPro hat, uh, I'll probably smash it into all their planes and they'll probably be upset. So I'm flying on the other side of the field. So this is considered the other side of the field. You can see there's nobody here. This runway has not been used, so it's really bumpy. I have to be careful my planes don't bounce and go into these trees because I can't control them. I got to try to get them to go this way and then around. And if you look over there, you can see, every, I'll zoom in, you can see everybody flying planes and cars and it's a little dangerous over there. All right, so I'm going to turn on the GPS just by pressing this button. It's all Bluetooth enabled and uh, there we go. So it's going to tell me when it has enough satellite satellites it gets usually 12 satellites really fast and then we're all set to go all right that was quick i have 12 satellites so i'm going to put it on flying and then i'm going to put it on start which will start reading any movements from the plane so we're all set and now we just plug this in get it ready to go because our battery we want it to be nice and full and full of juice one thing very important to mention about the Raptor is that it has ailerons right here. See, I can go ailerons. It has elevators, which is good. And they are separate. They're not elevons. But over here, no rudders. You cannot steer it. 
So I steer it with the aileron, so it means it makes very slow turns. You also have reverse thrust on this, so in other words, you can shoot forward or have it come backwards to slow it down when it's landing. I've never used it. This is a 64 millimeter EDF, if I haven't already mentioned it. So that is the size of the fan in the back. All right, no flaps or anything to get up, and unfortunately there's no wind today, so let's see what we get. Try to steer it with the nose gear, going full speed. She's up. I'm keeping it full throttle to get it going. Should see some speed happening. I slow it down for the turns a little bit. Reduce power so I can bring it by me. You'll see it going over. That's at slow speed. I don't want to crank it when it's going really, really fast. Three minutes. I'll try to crank it back at me here without hitting the trees because I'm not used to this area of the field. Slowing it down, coming right at me. Here we go. That's just gliding. And then power on. Woohoo! All right, I'm gonna do some runs. Uh, full speed so here we go full speed I'm taking out away from me it's going down the field now I'm gonna turn it back to me and come full blast back this way full blast coming at me and then going around I'd love to bring it down lower for a lot more shots, but I've got trees around me and a school, and it's pretty scary because I don't know how fast I can get it back up in the air if I go slow speed. Get it around, get it around. Normally I do uh, really slow turns, but on this one I'm trying to do tight turns because I've got no rudder. All right, so there's slow and low at Two me. Two minutes. Coming at me, there it is, slow and low. Walking right out to it. Right. Then gun it, woohoo! All right, I'm gonna do one last fast pass going straight back over the field. I've got a full throttle, I'm not letting off. Letting her go, letting her go, full throttle. That's it. And then we're gonna turn it and I'm gonna bring it back for a landing. All right, so I've never landed over here, so this would be interesting for you and I, and I guess what I'm gonna have to do is land on the grass. So I'll bring it down, make sure I don't hit any trees. I really can't tell because I'm not used to this area. There's trees all over there. Bring it down. There we go. Ooh, that was a beautiful landing, Steve. So can you take a guess on the speed? I'm gonna say compared to other jets I've flown, it's not super fast. It is, you know, manageable. It's, it's designed for beginners, I believe. So a beginner would enjoy this one. So let me put it down and check the speed. Got my phone here, I'm gonna hit stop and read. 112 kilometers per hour and I flew to a height of 83 meters because I was trying to keep it pretty high in a straight line. So 112 kilometers per hour, I will put below the screen what it is in miles per hour. Oh. Hey, that was good. I pulled the GPS off, the double-sided tape came off and look at that, no marks left. That's awesome, so here. Let's get this ready for the next plane. All right, we've got the F-16 all set and ready to go. You've seen I have placed the GPS here in the center of gravity. These little black dots are my CG marks. So that means it shouldn't affect the CG. And this camera weighs very little, so it shouldn't be too bad back there. It's still slightly nose heavy the way I like it. So we should have a good flight. Our F-16 is all set up and ready to go. And once again, it is an EDF jet at 64 millimeters. If you don't know what EDF means, I'll put it on the screen. So at 64 millimeters, that's a diameter of the fan blade that's in there. So this has the same motor as that Raptor over there. So you would think they should go the same speed, but they are controlled differently in the air. Whereas on the Raptor, I had ailerons, elevators, but no rudder. On this one, I have elevons. So see how everything moves here? It does a little dance. Those are elevons. And over here, I actually have a rudder. So if it's a windy day, I can do tight corners. So you'll probably see that here. I can probably whip this around in a tight corner. Only problem with tight corners is these wings aren't very large. So if you do too tight a corner and you're not going very fast, you'll stall. And just like the Raptor, I believe it has reverse thrust. I never use it, but it's a cool feature. All right, same idea. Take it down the runway. Try not to crash into the woods. Try to aim it somewhat straight. It shouldn't have any issues taking off without the wind because I have elevon. So I'm getting some uplift here and some uplift there. So it's not too bad. High speed flight. Oh, it's going to the right. Turn it over to the left and crank it. Oh, get up, get up, get up, get up, get up there. Oh, that one took a little bit more runway, surprisingly, because I couldn't get it to go straight. But I've got her on full throttle right now. I'm gonna take it around for a pass over my head. All right. Oh, we gotta bring it up. There we are, up there. Okay, full speed pass, so I can get the speed test. Here we're going with the GPS. That's easily getting the full speed. Time nice corner. This thing corner is super sharp. Cornered on a dime with that rudder. 
and then I'll bring it over our heads. You probably won't see it because it's way up there. High speed pass again. Sounds great. And now what I'll do is I'm going to bring it around for lower speed passes so you can see it. So I've got the throttle off. I'm getting it to glide. It's gliding now. This is gliding. And there we go. You got a good view of it that time. Another high speed pass. There we go. Corners beautifully. Get this around in a corner. No worries at all. And like I said, on a windy day with a rudder, you could fly this and do some amazing things. Ooh. There we go. I'd take it up over that tree. <laughs> Knowing me, I would hit the tree. All right, we're gonna bring it out for a landing. There's a plane up there over around my plane. Going full speed, out, and I'm gonna bring it back for a landing. Bleed off throttle, bleeding off throttle, and now I'm bleeding off height. Okay, so now it's coming down. Let's see if I can get it to come down beside us. Look at that, look at that, look at that. Beautiful! And that's on thick, bumpy, heavy grass that has not been cut for this year. That's awesome. All right, let's go check what the speed was. All right, let's take our phone and go stop. And let's go read 117 kilometers per hour. And we flew to a height of 64 meters. So I'll put below what it is in miles per hour. All right, so you saw the high speed flights with both of these planes, both on 4S, both flying pretty much stock out of the box. I haven't changed anything other than adding the GPS and the camera, which really doesn't weigh that much. Put everything at the center of gravity so they both flew really well. Now I did buy both of these planes off the Motion RC website, Motion RC website, and they're not very expensive because they're 64 millimeters and they do not have retractable landing gear. The gear stays down the entire flight. So when you get planes like that where the gear stays down, the price is usually a little bit lower. It also means it's one thing less to destroy and damage because if you have a bad landing with retractable landing gear, you got to replace that and that's kind of pricey. So all in all, these planes are a blast to fly, very easy to fly. I do like flying them more so when there's a bit of wind out. There's no wind today, so I had no wind to like help them launch because a propeller plane blows back wind, goes over the wings and it causes lift. These have to go way down the runway, get some speed to create their own lift and then finally take off. But if I had a little bit of a breeze, they would take off in very short order. All right, so links are below to both of these planes. Go check it out. And if you have any questions on these planes, just post them below and I'll get back to you. So thanks for watching this video. If you enjoyed it, please give it a thumbs up and I'll catch you in a future video with many more speed tests. Until then, I say bye.